The need to hammer things goes back to prehistoric times, when early man used stones as tools. The modern hammer evolved from those first crude implements, but with its forged steel design and user-friendly handle, the hammer of today is strikingly different. No one-hit wonder, the modern hammer is made to endure. It maintains its structural integrity despite repeated pounding and pulling. It starts with a thick steel bar. An automated system loads it into an induction furnace set at more than 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The fierce heat makes the steel malleable. This forge hammer pounds the hot steel into a series of hammer-shaped impressions. Then it's into a punch cutter which trims the ragged edges of the forged steel. The cutoffs go into a bin for recycling. A worker sandwiches the newly trimmed shape in a press that fine tunes the shape. The hammers cool down on this revolving rack. Then they load the hammers into a tumbler along with tiny bits of steel. So tiny they're hard to see, but their impact will be very noticeable. As they toss about, the bits rub off scale and debris on the hammers for an impressive cleanup. They then clamp the hammer in a device that spins it against abrasive belts to contour the striking head. These belts also bevel the hammer's head. It's a safety feature. The sloped edge is less likely to chip nails on impact. Now, this jagged cutting wheel carves ridges into the hammer's head. The device repositions the hammer so the wheel can cut it in a different direction to create a grid. This surface is less likely to slip off nails on impact. Next comes the tempering process. The hammers plunge into a very hot bath. Then they dip them in quenching oil which cools the metal so quickly it hardens. Now it's time for another polish. This one makes the steel gleam. It's the finishing touch. Next, they assemble leather rings in a tray, 25 to each one. They place plastic rings at each end to break up the look and buttress it with a pronged metal disc. They slide the tray into a compartment and insert the end of the hammer in the rings. A hydraulic tool rams it through them, encasing the handle in a neat wrap that's comfortable to grasp. They secure the end of the hammer in a clamp, and then a spinning tool flattens the prongs that protrude from the metal plate, riveting it to the leather wrap. Then, using a series of sanding belts, they smooth the rough leather for a seamless finish. This is a tank of heavy lacquer in which they immerse the hammers repeatedly. When it dries, the lacquer will give the leather wrap a tough, sleek finish, and the leather will look like one textured piece instead of many. For a different kind of handle, they pour liquid vinyl on the hammer shaft that's encased in a mold. The vinyl adheres to the hammer as it hardens. The mold leaves a dimpling impression that will make the hammer easier to grip. They grind off the hardened vinyl spillover and contour the handle. These handles are preferred by some tradesmen because the vinyl is an anti-shock material. They stamp the model number onto it. Paint guns miss the steel with lacquer for a little rust proofing. The hammers then travel through an oven, which cures the lacquer. After they stamp the company logo onto the vinyl, each hammer is visually inspected. Only then does it get a seal of approval. It takes about a day to make a hammer. And with the different handle wraps and sizes, they've really nailed it.